That, of course, is going to be teased out and more developed in the Reformation. That's something we'll talk about in future episodes. But it is the case that Augustine is and has the place that he does in our understanding of the history of the church because he does bring a vigorous understanding of grace to the fore again in a way that it hadn't quite been to the fore really since Paul. Uh, the, The early church has a sense of the changed life that we enjoy in Christ, and there's so much emphasis over against the whole pagan world, and there's a lot of emphasis on the changed life that we have in Christ that the you could say, and this is something Torrance says about the, the Apostolic Fathers, one of his comments is there tends to be a lot of imperative and little indicative. And Augustine is going to really recapture some of that indicative. And just for you listeners who might be scratching your head over these linguistic terms, the indicative is basically what Christ has done for us, who he is and what he's done for us that we could never do for ourselves. And the imperative arises out of that. You have this uh, a great deal in Paul. Paul bases how we ought to live, how we ought to live as Christians on the basis of what Christ has done for us. So, in other words, the call to do always arises out of the fact that Christ has done. This tends to get marginalized uh, in the church's history in these early years as the gospel is going out to the nations. And it really is something that that Augustine, influenced by Ambrose, Ambrose has it, has it there in a form, but Augustine really develops it. 